He didn't just do what he did because he didn't have nothing better to do. Uh, it was a great sacrifice. Uh, great, the ultimate sacrifice. Nobody ever loved me like Jesus did. And uh, no doubt, while he was on the cross, I was on his mind. Long before I ever knew who he was, he knew who I was. And he loved me. He gave me mercy and he died for me. And I bless his name. I want you to take your Bibles tonight and be found in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter number 6 tonight. I'll give you the thought the Lord's laid upon my heart. Proverbs, chapter number 6. And find verse number 6. Proverbs, chapter number 6. And verse number 6 is where I want to go. And uh, I pray to be a help and a blessing to you. And uh, as, as much as it was to you as it was to me in studying. And uh, when you find your place, if you're willing and able, we'll go ahead and stand and we'll honor the reading and that of the Word of God. Proverbs chapter number 6, verse number 6. Proverbs chapter number 6 and verse number 6. If you love your Bible this evening, would you let it know by saying amen? amen. The Bible says, go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. Heavenly Father, we love you tonight. Lord, I pray, God, now as we open the blessed old book, Lord, I pray that you would illuminate thy truth to our hearts tonight. And I pray, God, you'd make preaching easy. Lord, I pray that, uh, Lord, I... Uh, you'd allow me to preach as a dying man to dying men. I pray, God, we would not take this opportunity that is before us for granted, but, God, we would seize uh, what you're desiring to do in our hearts and lives here this evening. I pray, uh, should there be one here, Lord, most of all that is lost, I pray they wouldn't leave that same way. But I pray that they would come and they would repent of their sin, place their faith in you, and be forever changed. I pray for a fresh touch and a fresh anointing, Lord. I, I recognize I'm in dire need of a touch from above tonight. And Lord, there'll be no preaching except you do the preaching. And so I pray, God, breathe on me one more time. Lord, hide me behind the cross of Calvary. I pray we'd see no man save Jesus only. And we'll not fail to give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's high and his holy name we do humbly pray. And all of God's people said, Amen and amen. Thank you so much for standing. You can be seated this evening. If you know your Bible, you know and understand that Solomon, the book of Proverbs, was written by a man by the name of Solomon. Solomon, we understand, uh, being the wisest of men outside of the Lord Jesus himself, he was full and that of wisdom and knowledge and and Solomon would write three books of the Bible. We know he would write the, uh, the Song of Solomon. He would write the book of Proverbs. And then he would write the book of Ecclesiastes. And so all three of those books is, uh, is books that are filled uh, in that with wisdom. By the way, if the wisest man to ever live outside of the Lord Jesus has got something to say, I believe we ought to give him ear and to hear what he's got to say. Now, I understand that not everybody values wisdom in our day. Not everybody uh, cares, uh, uh, cares for wisdom, but uh, wisdom is a good thing. Somebody say amen right there. Uh, it's better to know than not to know. I understand there's some things. Uh, we, we've got a saying that goes around says, well, I'd just rather not know. And, and uh, although that may uh, clear your conscience a little bit, but the reality is it's better off that you do know because it's better uh, to know than not to know. And, uh, but wisdom is a good thing. Godly wisdom, the Bible says, is better than gold. It's better to get, uh, the Bible says, than to choose silver. Yet fools despise wisdom and knowledge. A fool don't want to know. I was watching a video earlier today and, and a man was, well, he was witnessing to an individual and, and uh, they, he was trying to uh, share the gospel with them and they said, well, uh, we just don't want to know. You know, they talked about how they didn't believe in hell and didn't believe in, and, 
and, and, and they said, well, you know, what if you're wrong? And he says, well, I'm not wrong because I choose just not to believe it and I choose not to, I just, I just choose not to know. And, and the reality of the matter is you can choose not to know, but a friend, the truth is reality's real, a truth is real, and it's best that you know the truth. And so wisdom uh, and knowledge, that's a good thing. A fool don't want to know the truth. A fool don't care about the truth. There's no desire of truth. They're only interested in what's good for self, how what's good for the flesh, and what's good for them as an individual. But you hear me and hear me well tonight. Uh, when it's all said and done, uh, and everything comes and goes, and the battle's over, and the smoke uh, is clear, the one thing that will still be standing is the truth of the Word of God. And so it'd be wise to hear what God's got to say. <laughs> It'd be wise to uh, come to understand the truth. Now, uh, if there's one thing you ought to get a hold of, you ought to get a hold of the truth. You ought to believe the Bible. You ought to want to know more, as the song says a while ago, about our Lord than we knew just yesterday. And so Proverbs is a book filled with wisdom. Good wisdom, godly wisdom. Here in the book of Proverbs, chapter number six, the Bible says, go to the ant and consider her ways. Now, I don't know about you, but I hate ants. I don't hate them as much as I hate snakes, but they're right up there. They're, they're, uh, they're, 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 they're a number two right in there, all right? We'll put them up there high on the list. Uh, I'd still, I'd, I'd lay down in an ant pile before I'd fool with a little old snake because I can't stand snakes, but I, ants are not far behind them in my book. I don't like ants. I meet up with ants right now at our house. <laughs> everywhere, I don't know if it's like at y'all's house, but I don't know what it is about this year, but it seems like ants was everywhere. I mean, everywhere in the field, in the yard. I mean, they're just everywhere you turn around. Uh, there was ants everywhere. And yet here, the Bible says, go to the ant and consider her ways. Of all of the creatures to follow after, of all of the creatures to observe and to learn from, I wouldn't think that the ant would be the one that we need to be paying attention to. That just don't seem right to me, Brother Pondell. I just, I don't know. I, I thought we'd have been, you know, you know, go, go pay attention to a horse or something, you know, at least, you know, something that's got, but an ant? Nobody cares about no ants. But how many of you know tonight that God's ways are not our ways? And what we think is good, oftentimes God says that's not good. This is good. What we think we ought to be doing, God says you ought not be doing that, you ought to be doing this. And so God says, go to the ant. Go to the ant, consider her ways, and be wise. Who would have ever thought that ants could bring wisdom to your life? Amen. I just thought they could bring pain and misery and just aggravation, but... According to the Bible, you pay attention to some ants and they'll bring some wisdom to your life. Did you know that there are some 12,000 different species of ants? I had no idea there's that many ants. I thought an ant was an ant. Now, I remember in my lifetime, it wasn't a few years ago, uh, well, it's been a few years, but I can remember when the fire ants started getting real around here. Y'all remember that? It's just... <laughs> There's this old man back up, <laughs> some of you probably know, so I ain't even gonna mention his name, but he is, we is a working, and they said, them fire ants down there. And he was in a transformer, and we was trying to get down there and work, and he said, there ain't no fire ants around here, boy, get out of the way, let me show you. And he laid down there, and it wasn't just a minute, <laughs> he come up jerking his clothes off and everything else. They really were fire ants in Tennessee. <laughs> now they're everywhere around here. Did you know that an ant can lift up to 20 times their weight? Ants are very strong for their size. Queen ants can live for many years and they can have millions of babies. That's, that's very understandable. As many ants as there are, we know they can have millions of babies. Ants don't, here's, here's an interesting fact about ants. Ants don't have lungs. To my understanding, my research and study about ants they got these two little holes where oxygen will come in and then oxygen will go out. There is no lung in an ant. 
This is an interesting fact that I found concerning these fire ants. Did you know that fire ants are the leading cause for traffic light shorts in the state of Texas? <laughs> the number one reason why they keep having shorts in, in, in the traffic signals in the state of Texas is due to fire ants. And it is estimated that our federal government spends $5 billion each year for the damage that ants cause. Now, I don't know if that's exactly the case, if all five billion of them dollars is going to what ants are tearing up every year, but they're at least saying it that way. It's probably going somewhere else. But fire ants are causing a great deal of problems in the state of Texas when it comes to red lights. Come to find out, there's a lot of things I didn't know about ants until I read Proverbs chapter number six. There's a lot of things that I didn't care to know about ants until I read Proverbs chapter number six. Here's why. I didn't care about ants. Don't want to know about ants. But God says, go to the ant. In other words, God says, look at the ant. He says, watch the ant. Pay attention to the ant. Observe the ant because there are some things that you're going to learn from the ant when you look at them and you watch the ant. There's some things that the ant will teach you that you're going to need to know in your Christian life. That's going to help you. And so that's what we're going to do tonight. I'm going to give you some things that I've learned from the ant. I'm going to give you some things that, that I have noticed from the ant that are that are that has spoke to me. Obviously, I know there can be many more. Uh, the list could be a lot bigger, but this is what I got from my observation. And uh, I'll just go out on a limb tonight and say that if you were to leave here and to observe the ant for a few days around your house, I'd say you'll be able to come up with more things than what I've got tonight. And uh, that'd be good. You can go observe some things, come up with some more truths and come back and give it to me and I'll add it to the list and we'll preach it again some on t uh, somewhere down the line. We'll give a part two to it. And so here is what I want, to, uh, I want you to notice about these ants. By the way, I want to say this and then I'll hurry and we'll get into the list. I'll say this. If I think about this, if, if you left here tonight and you went on your way home from church or maybe in between services today and you saw a man out in the field and he's got a pad, and a, 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 a pad of paper and he's got a pencil and he's hovered over this big old ant, ant mound and he's taking notes and he's watching him, what would have been your first thought? I'd have thought, that old boy's crazy. He's lost his mind. But come to find out, according to Proverbs chapter number six, he ain't crazy. He's biblical. God says, go to the ant. Watch the ant. Pay attention to the ant. Because the ant is going to teach you some things. Number one, I want you to notice about the ant tonight that the ant is not a lazy creature. The ant is not lazy. I chose this to be the first on the list tonight concerning the ant. Here's why. Because of the context of the scripture. Notice what your Bible says. He says, go to the ant, thou slugger. A slugger, for those that don't know, is somebody who's lazy. And there's somebody who's sluggish. Matter of fact, a habitual, a habitual lazy person is the actual definition of a true slugger if you were to look it up. And if ever there was a generation that needed to spend some time with the ant, amen, it is this generation we're living in today because how many will agree with the preacher tonight that we're living in a very lazy, lazy generation? Amen. 
That's why when you leave here and you go out here to a restaurant somewhere, now it takes you two hours to get your food and you can't get nothing for I mean, why is that? Because nobody wants to work. They, I mean, I don't know how many times you say, well, y'all need to hire some help. They say, we've been trying uh, for months now. We can't get no help. Nobody uh, nobody wants to work. Uh, you can find, I remember when a time, uh, even in my lifetime, jobs were hard to come by. I remember when I graduated high school, that was a big deal, you know, uh, to find you a job, get you a job. People was begging for work and, and begging for a job. Not now, friend. These boys and girls uh, that's graduating high school today, hey, if you ain't working a job, you're without excuse because you can, uh, you can get a job nearly anywhere right now uh, because we're living in a lazy generation. Everybody wanting something for nothing. Everybody wants the product, but they don't want to pay the price. They don't want no uh, responsibility. They want it easy. We're a generation. We're a generation that's gotten spoiled to what we are. Shay got me hooked in on this Walmart pickup when the COVID hit. Said, you ain't gonna believe this. So some other woman told her about it, and so she tried it out. She came home, she said, you ain't gonna believe this. You can go to Walmart. You can stay in the car. You can leave the kids in the car, and they will bring the groceries out and put them in your vehicle for you. You ain't gotta do nothing. I said, whatever. She said, go with me next time. Sure enough. I said, you just pull up and just... She said, oh, yeah. They'll, they'll, they'll load it. I got out to help them. Nope, don't, don't, they don't even want your help. They'll load it for you. You're kidding me. I ain't been in Walmart since. <laughs> Drive up, put your order in, they'll bring it and put it to your car. If that ain't good enough for you, if you're too lazy to drive to Walmart, we go even further than that. You can get on Amazon today and get about whatever you want. And you don't even got to go pick it up. They'll bring it to you. Put it on your front porch. Huh? No wonder we're, we've become such a lazy society. I mean, I mean, just, 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 we're, we're, it's all about convenience. Whatever's the easiest. Whatever's the easiest. It's a, and we've produced a lazy society. I was talking to a man the other day, and he was telling me, he said, have you noticed with this upcoming generation, they are, they, they don't even want to buy a house. They're all about renting now. And I said, man, that's, that's dumb. Why would anybody want to rent their whole life and not, 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 not try to, you know, not try to own something? They said, here's why. They don't care about owning anything because they don't want no responsibility. If a water line breaks, they won't be able to call somebody, hey, come fix your water line. They don't want to mow their yard. They don't want no responsibility. They don't want none of that stuff. They'd rather just pay rent and move along because they're, in the end, they're just lazy. Amen. Ants, God says, go to the ant. And the first thing you're going to learn about an ant, you pay attention to it very long, you're going to find out that an ant's not lazy. Every time I've seen an ant, they were working. They're always moving. I ain't never seen an ant be still. They're always moving. They're never still. And I'm all for a break every now and then. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but some of y'all went on break years ago and you ain't never came off of it. <laughs> but an ant ain't never on break. I don't believe they ever take a break. Never. They're constantly working. And just for the record, in case you, in case you ain't caught up to it, God don't like laziness. That's why he says, go to the ant. He don't like laziness. We're living in a generation that's becoming so lazy, and then they won't point the finger, you know, and tell everybody else, you know, how to fix everything and what to do and, 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 and what's wrong, what needs to be done, but nobody wants to do it. 
I got a problem with this crowd that wants to show up at the house of God and talk about everything that's wrong and everything that needs to be done and ah, oh, this needs to be fixed and this needs to be doing this and on, 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 except I got a problem when they want to come in here and point the finger and try to boss everybody around, yet they don't want to lend a helping hand. They don't want to do no work. And at the same time, if you went and looked at their house, it's a train wreck and looks like a dump and ain't mowed their yard in, in, in two or three months. I got a problem with that. Hey, you just best keep your mouth shut until you learn to take care of your own stuff. Lazy people. I can't stand laziness. Hey, 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 it's one thing to be poor. It's another thing to be lazy. Ain't nothing wrong with poor people. Ain't something wrong with lazy people. You can pick up your trash. Somebody say amen. One of the reasons that this place tonight, if we're being honest, is not full to capacity. You don't know why that is? One of the main reasons is, is because when you just get down to it, you know what the truth of the matter is? We've just gotten lazy. We've gotten lazy in our witnessing. We've gotten lazy in our soul winning. We've just, we've just gotten lazy in the work of God. God says, go to the ant. You pay attention to the ant, and you're going to find that an ant is a worker. A slugger never gets started. Here's what a slugger says. Well, we'll get to it tomorrow. It'll be all right till next week. We'll get on that next week. They never get started. An ant never gets stopped. I mean, they're constantly working. They're constantly going. They're always started. An ant is not lazy. Number two, ants are always about business. They're always about business. Ants are always working. You ever notice that? I've never seen ants hanging out, taking it easy, having an ant party. <laughs> I don't know. You know, having, a, having an ant cookout. I've never seen that. Every time I've seen an ant, they're working. Watch this now. They're always working without supervision. You ever thought about that? I've never seen the slave masters behind the ants, uh, uh, the taskmasters, you know, uh, beating them over the back and saying, hey, I get up that hill and hey, get to work. And No, 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 I ain't never seen that. An ant just is about business. Nobody's standing over them all the time telling them what they do. They know their job and they just do it. Can I say something to you, child of God? Y'all just do what you know what y'all to be doing. And you ought not have, have to have somebody over your back every week, every day, telling you, all right, Christian, you ought to read your Bible today. All right, child of God, you ought to pray today. I mean, I mean, y'all, hey, the preacher ought not have to call you every week and say, hey, you ought to go to church today. Why don't you get up and come to the house of God? Uh, y'all not, hey, uh, you ought to go to the ant, pay attention to the ant, see that the ant's all about business at all times, and you ought to be about business at all times as well. Amen. Y'all know how it is when the boss is on the scene. Everybody tightens up just a bit. But as soon as the boss leaves, everybody kicks back a little bit. Ain't that the way it goes? Sure it is. You don't ever see ants doing that. I tell you something else. You don't ever see ants having conferences and meetings on how to build better mounds. Not that I'm against conferences and meetings. We're fixing to have one around here next week. I'm just trying to get you to say, they don't spend time talking about it. <laughs> they don't spend time. they just all about business day in and day out. We ought to do what we're supposed to be doing. And we ought not have to have somebody over our backs all the time trying to tell us what we need to be doing. Ants aren't that way. They're about business. Yeah. I'll tell you something else about ants. Ants always show up. They're faithful Amen. They're faithful in their attendance. They always show up. You don't believe me? Leave, uh, leave a little bit of sugar out on the, on, on the kitchen floor this evening. And I promise, if they ain't there by the time you get up in the morning, they'll be there by the time you get off work tomorrow evening. They are faithful to show up. They'll always show up. Y'all to show up. Y'all to be faithful in your attendance. You can count on the ants to be there. I say something, child of God, we ought to, you ought to be able to count on you. 
around the house of God and the work of God. You ought to be, we ought to be a people that can be dependent on. Amen. Amen. He says go to the ant. I'll give you something else about ants. Ants don't get discouraged. That's what I got and I observed them. Y'all get whatever you want to get. And you start, go home and look at some ants this week. Say, I can't find none. Come to my house. I got plenty of them. Amen. Probably got more mounds in, <laughs> at my place than we got church members around here. But ants don't get discouraged. How many times have we come across these mounds in our yard? We get mad and we take a shovel or whatever and we try to throw them out of the way. Well, they do. By tomorrow evening, they done got it. You done see her coming back again. Now, I mean, you would think, why don't they get discouraged and go on and build something somewhere? I mean, they just, they'll be back. They don't quit. They are a determined creature. No matter what, they are going to accomplish whatever it is they're trying to accomplish. You know what would do us some good around the house of God today? If we could get some Christians, get a little determination about them. Amen, amen. Y'all got quiet. I might need to hit that in just one more time. I tell you, maybe it's right here at Freedom Baptist Church. I tell you what we need as church members today as Freedom Baptist Church. We need a little determination around the house of God. Amen. Get a little determined for some things. They, 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 these, 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 these ants are a determined Christ, uh, a creature. Too many Christians today, they'll be good for just a little bit but something that don't go their way in their life and some little adversity uh, comes to pass and they're done. They quit altogether. Amen. I've seen them come to church and, and, and man, it'll be going good there for a little bit and then all of a sudden they show up one Sunday and somebody says something to them. Somebody says something to them. Somebody does something that rubs them the wrong way and they say, well, I ain't coming back. I mean, just like that. Why is that? They ain't got no determination. I've seen them get up to sing a song and maybe give a testimony of word of the goodness of God and, and somebody, somebody, somebody say something, somebody do something, whether intentionally or not, they get rubbed the wrong way and I'm done, I ain't doing it again. No determination. An ant, I'm talking about you can destroy his man time and time again and they'll keep coming back and they'll keep coming back. <laughs> And they'll keep, I'm going to tell you, you better get, if you're going to be in the ministry, you better get you some determination because I promise you, you are going to get your feelings hurt. And they are going to say things that's going to rub you the wrong way. You better get some determination if you're going you're gonna to make it. They always show up. They're determined. Ants are hard to get rid of. I like them church members that's just hard to get rid of. I like them ones where you can get up and I mean you can, pre, you can, you can take a text and you can write back and preach on whatever. And they may not like it, but they'll be back tonight. <laughs> they'll be back next week. I mean it may hit them right square in the jaw, but they'll show back up. They're hard to get rid of. We're trying to pastor a bunch nowadays. I mean it's just, it's like you got to walk on eggshells. I don't want to offend them. They won't come back. Get their feelings hurt. Ants are hard to get rid of. God says, go to the ant. He'll teach you some things. I'll tell you something else about the ant. Ants have a straight walk. You ever notice ants and watched them? Always in a straight line. I mean, they're always walking straight. God wants us to have a straight walk in our life. Amen. Words like honesty integrity, character. Those are words that ought to mean something to the child of God. Amen. Those, are, those are things that ought to, ought to mean something to you and I. Don't call yourself a Christian, friend, and don't tell all of McMinn County that you're a member of Freedom Baptist Church and you show up around here on Sunday, but yet Monday through Thursday, you're down here uh, cussing and a fighting and a acting a fool. Hey, it's just best you keep your mouth shut. Don't tell them you go to our church. Amen. But a lot of people, that don't bother them no more. But I want you to understand something tonight, friend. The way you act, the way you talk, the way you dress, that matters. It matters. You ought to have a straight walk. 
Y'all to walk straight and upright. You ought to live your life in such a way that when somebody looks to you and they look at you, they, they don't have to wonder where you stand. They don't have to wonder who you are. You got a straight walk. One of the problems it's so hard to grow a church in 2022 is because we got so many so-called Christians who want to come to church and identify with the family of God and the things of God, but then uh, they want to leave the house of God and their walk don't match their talk. It's a generation of hypocrites. You don't have to worry about where an ant's going. They got a straight walk from point A to point B. If they're going from here to there, they're not going, they're, they're going straight there. If an obstacle gets in the way, they'll go around the obstacle, but they'll get back on the straight and narrow just as quick as they can. They got a straight walk. I'll give you something else about ants. Ants work together. Oh, yeah. Here we go. You never see ants fussing and a fighting. You ever notice? You ain't never seen no. I ain't never seen an ant fight, brother Marty. I just ain't never seen. You know, I've never. I've never had somebody come to me. Hey, come on over here. We got a big ant fight going on over here. I ain't never seen that. Never heard of it. Ants don't fuss. They don't fight. Ants don't even com complain about who's doing what in the assembly line. You'll never find an ant upset because ant number two is, you know, up there and I'm back here and I ought to be up there and they ought to be back here and we, you know, it's just, you know, why can't I be up in the front of the line and, you know, but I'm in the back and it ought to, the queen ought to rotate us every now and then and I feel like I need to be in the front, you know. And I mean, you never see that with ants. They don't care. They just find their spot. They fill a hole. Whatever's needed, wherever they're at, and they just go to work. They don't fight. They don't complain. Hey Amen. I knew it'd get quiet on that one right there. I'll say this, you will never realize how hard it is to get people, a group of people, together and working together for a common cause. You'll never realize how hard that is until you have pastored a Baptist church. Now that's the truth, friend. Amen. I'm not saying we got a bunch of division in our church. I, I hope to gosh we don't, but I'm telling you, it ain't going to hurt us to hang around the ants for a little bit and learn from them so we don't get no division. Amen. Yep. Ants, they work together. We ought to work together. Every time you go do something, seems like, you know, we got to constantly worry about, well, who we going to offend? Who's going to get their feelings hurt? And who's going to... It ought not be that way. It ought not be that way. It ought to be, we just, we just pile in and fill a spot and fill a hole and, and it don't matter. I like getting around them folks that don't care what they're doing. They're just glad to be doing something for the glory of God. Holding the door, running the sound, they don't care. Just, just whatever. They're just working. Ants work together. Ants are cautious about what they intake. I'm almost done. I got this one and one more and I'm done. Ants are cautious about what they intake. Heard this illustration this guy was talking about how that he did an experiment with ants. Ants, we know, love sugar. Go figure. Everybody loves sugar. But ants, you could take a pile of sugar. He said he tried this. Put, took a, uh, had a pile of sugar, and the ants was, you know, eating it up. And he took a pile of salt. And he put the salt right here, and he had the, he had the sugar here. And he said, even though it looked the same, he said they would not touch the salt. Only the sugar. You ever, and you got to thinking, well, why is that? And you understand when you take salt and you put it on a, everybody, I know y'all ain't never done this, you ain't never been as cruel as I am, but you remember when we was kids, we used to take the salt, put it on them snails? Uh-huh. Yeah, Miss Phyllis, she's testifying to it. Hey, Amen, Miss Karen is. Y'all remember what that did. See, an ant, if they were to, they were to take some of that salt back, they might make it back home, but eventually... It's going to have a negative effect on them. And many of them's going to die as a result of it. 
They're careful about what they intake. They're careful about what they take home with them. You better be careful about what you take home with you, friend. Better be, better be careful about what you let in your house. You better go to the ant and you better, you better watch them. You better pay attention. You better, you better be careful about what you, what, you, what you let inside your house, what you let around your kids because in the end, it may end up killing them. Amen. You better be careful. An ant's cautious about that. And then lastly, an ant is a prepared creature. A prepared creature. Let me show you what I mean. Notice what the text says. Go to the ant, thou slugger. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, watch this now, verse 8 says, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. What's it saying? It's saying that an ant's a hard worker and an ant's about business, all of these things, and taking care of business during the summertime because an ant realizes there's a day just ahead of them where the temperature is going to change. And summer's not going to be here no more, but it's going to come winter time. The book of Ecclesiastes says there's a time for everything. There's a season for everything. There's a time to work. There's a time to uh, live, laugh, die. There's, there's a time for everything. And the ant realizes that now is the time to prepare for what is ahead. And so constantly they're working. And they're working. And they're totally focused. Everything the ant does is totally based off of preparation. They know that winter is soon coming. And they spend all of their effort in preparing for that time. May I say to you tonight, if there's one thing you can learn from the ant tonight, one thing you need to get a hold of is the ant is prepared. And if there's one thing you need to get a hold of tonight, you better get prepared. It's summertime right now, but winter's just around the corner. There's a day just ahead for every man, every woman, every boy, and every girl, and if you're not prepared for it, you ain't gonna make it. It's not gonna be good. You will be destroyed. And we need to be more like the ant in this day, in this hour, during this season. And everything we do ought to be motivated by preparation for what's ahead. It ought to be motivated for preparation for eternity. The ant is motivated by preparation. We ought to be a prepared creature as well. Motivated, everything about us. Now, as I close, I want to say this, and I want you to think within your mind. You don't have to answer, but I want you to think to yourself, just this week, all your effort, all your time, everything you've done this week, what was it based on? Was it based on preparing for what is ahead? Was it based on preparing for eternity? I mean, how many... How many folk did you pray for? How many, how many folk did you witness to? What did you do? How, how hard did you work to prepare for what is ahead? I dare say most of the things we did this week was motivated by a lot of other reasons instead of preparation for eternity. God sent me this way this night. God stirred within my heart this message for us to take a time out and go to the ant and learn some wisdom. How they're prepared. How they're prepared. I look at it like this and I'm done. I was talking about, talking about uh, the young people and our kids and how I was wanting to see my kids raised, you know, and that's one prayer that me and, me and Shay has prayed is that the Lord will let us see our kids raised. And I hope that takes place. But then on the other side of the coin, I'm dreading to see them raised. I'm just being honest. Y'all realize it ain't going to be too, too much longer. I'm going to have a teenager in my house. And if y'all don't, if, if, 
If Brother Chris don't end up coming and bailing me out of jail one of these days, it'll be the grace of God. I'll just go ahead and testify to it. If you ever read in the headlines, hey, I heard your preacher got arrested, you automatically know what he did. He done killed one of his boys. <laughs> beat them half to death. They done took him to jail for it. But the more I think about it, man, they're fixing to get to that point. They're going to step out. And they're going to face some things. And daddy ain't going to be there. Mama ain't going to be there. Preacher ain't going to be there. And man, that scares me after death. And you know what? You know what it does? It causes goose pimples to pop up on my neck right now because I think about the day and the time that I had that God gave me to prepare them. What did I do with that time? God says you better go to the ant and pay attention to that ant and see how he's motivated by preparation. There's some things we ought to get prepared for tonight and we need to get busy about. Consider the ant. Who would have ever thought that the ant could teach the Christian so much? Come to find out God will give you great wisdom by just paying attention to the ant. Would you stand to your feet tonight? Heads bowed, eyes closed, nobody looking around. Father, I thank you for the word of God. Lord, I thank you for this truth tonight. Lord, I pray that we as your people, I pray, God, may we let it reside within our hearts tonight. There is a lot we can learn from the ant tonight. And I pray some of these truths that, that you've made known by the ant, I pray, God, we'd get a hold of it. God, I don't want to be a lazy Christian. I know it has not been the testimony of Freedom Baptist Church that it's ever been a lazy church. It's been a working church and a moving church. And God, I want to keep it that way. And I pray that you would stir within the hearts of your people tonight, God, that we need to get busy we are to be about the business, our Father's business. I pray we'd have a straight walk. I pray we'd make some preparation, get some things in order. God, may we never get so discouraged that we just quit altogether. But I pray just as the ant, I pray we'd be a people that's hard to get rid of, a church that's hard to get rid of. But we're constantly popping back up, going back to work, preaching one more time, singing one more time, doing the work one more time. If there's one here tonight that is not prepared for eternity, and they've never been saved, I pray, God, that you'd speak to their heart in a special way, and I pray they won't leave the same way they came. May they come, place their faith in you, and be forever changed. We love you, we praise you, we bless your name. It's in Jesus' high and holy name we do humbly pray. Amen and amen.